मार्केट इज माई पैशन एंड आई कैन नॉट अवॉइड इट हेलो एंड वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ क्रिकेट अन प्लग टूडे वी हैव नॉट वन बट टू स्टार्स ऑफ यू ए क्रिकेट वन हु सर्व यू ए क्रिकेट फ्रॉम द अर्ली एटीज एंड हु इज नाउ वर्किंग विद एयरलाइन इंडस्ट्री एंड द अदर हैज बीन प्लेइंग क्रिकेट आई डोंट नो फ्रॉम वॉट एज आई डोंट नो वॉट इज इज एज ऑल्सो बट both have done very well for their respected countries rather for uae cricket let me introduce you first kurram khan assalam alaikum kurram wa alaikum assalam and assalam alaikum everyone and also introduce rohan mustafa as he is known by roni how are you roni good alhamdulillah and is by alhamdulillah good to have uh, both of you you know so far i have been talking to individual cricketers but uh, it gives me a lot of happiness that i have two superstars of uae cricket and who have done well in their cricketing terms rather cricketing journey so far so let me first begin with uh, kurram kurram tell me your first association with uae cricket we all know that you were playing uh, the domestic cricket with emirates airlines and also another team could you just speak us about it uh, bismillah rahman rahim Uh, this was my first interaction with the UAE cricket. I would say I was here in UAE since 1996, and I think 2001 July was the first assignment. I think we were going to Canada to play ICC Trophy, so that was first time I was ever picked for UAE cricket team. Uh, I think since then, uh, if you go go back four five years when I was in UAE, I was doing very well in domestic cricket, and uh, you know I had a lot of respect at uh, domestic tournaments. Uh, Um, pretty much i was performing super so i think that was the first time uh, they called me in the camp it was a very big camp 150 200 people and then they had to shortlist and they require only two people to travel with them actually three people to travel with them who are not born in uae so on the category that you are living more than 5 years in uae so i remember in that tournament myself arshad ali and nasir from abu dhabi were picked so that was the first tournament ICC Trophy Canada that I was picked for you. All right, and Roni, your first association. Rather, when did you start playing cricket in UAE? And this way, I started uh, playing cricket in two thousand and three. Uh, I was very young at that time. I think I was fourteen, something like that. And after that, I was playing just a club cricket. But uh, uh, you know, I started playing for some B division club. but then i got selected for under 19 in 2007 where we went to malaysia and at that time abi kurovila was the coach and uh, out of five matches i took three men of the match in that uh, in that tournament uh, unluckily we uh, we uh, lost the semi final against afghanistan but uh, and then we, it was a third position match so even we won that match as well so after that you know uh, because of my performance uh, they referred me to the senior team as khoram bhai said like it was quite difficult time because you have to spend 7 years uh, and that time that was the category right now it's very easy 2 and a half year something like that so i got selected for uh, two tours we one we were going to kuwait and then another south africa uh, division 2 but i didn't get opportunity in that tournament because it was very tough rules you know there was like only two players have to play who have spent 5 years and uh, at that time we were having very good players uh, Uh, Shadi was there, and then uh, I don't remember his name. Is wicketkeeper Sri Lankan wicketkeeper. So that was my first assignment for the UAE. Yeah. Uh, Kuram, uh, you know we have been seeing you playing for uh, corporate companies. I, I remember one of your innings in Sharjah. It was the Ramzan final, if I'm not wrong. It's a T20, where uh, from a hopeless situation you made them win that final. I am sure you must have won many. matches for your team but do you remember which innings i am talking about where you all required a run rate of 10 runs per over and during those days you made that run chase possible can you tell us about that innings yeah i think it was a, a final and it was against css yes. and it was not 20 over it was 35 overs if i remember exactly okay and when i went to bat uh, on the other end it was fahad usman from emirates airline he was batting with me and we were like 30 for 4 or 5 so yeah. it was kind of all, all over so when i went to bat and i asked fahad fahad usman do not go for the chase just forget about the chase and you know just play your innings and we'll see how it goes so 
five six overs just play normal cricket and i think when we played five six overs at least it was seven overs then we realized that now the average is creeping to nine in over 10 in over so last 10 overs if i remember we required 95 or something so fahad was on the other end so we get together you know a meeting in the over after the over and i told him fahad if we want to win the match and if we do not start doing anything now it's going to be too late so let's go for seven eight runs seven eight runs you know without taking any risks and it all started coming back you know the uh, runs were coming and then you feel that ball is realizing as well that it's not going to be easy because both batsmen fahad was amazing all rounder at that time and uh, i was in my peak as well and uh, we chased that target and it was amazing it's one of the best things because the good thing and the great thing about that innings was that next day since leroy linze leroy linze he was our manager ms cricket team he called me and he said oh ram that's the first time that the losing team sent me an email in the office that one of the best chases they have ever seen imagine the you know losing team sending an email that we were thoroughly enjoyed by ram jani so yes he reminded me of one of the great innings well i was lucky enough to see the innings and i, I have to honestly admit uh, as you mentioned it was one of the finest innings roni you remember seeing that finals or were you too young to see that no i, I don't remember <laughs> that days <laughs> no problem can you tell us which was one of your best innings which you have played for your domestic cricket you have also played many match winning innings rather you are an all rounder who can do everything with bat ball field uh, i mean roni is like the shahid afridi of uae cricket <laughs> and is bhai i have played so many cricket and uh, as you said but uh, the one i remember uh, which i played for danube in uh, bukhatir league uh, it was not only my innings it was my all round performance i still remember we were playing against uh, phoenix and they were having very i mean star studded from pakistan sharjeel was there soheil khan was there they were having a lot of players and i still remember i scored 98 something like that but uh, after batting you know we were um, they they were batting very well because khalid atif al also there in this uh, in their team and there was few other players very good players and you know uh, khalid usman was captain and you know we were going down because they were chasing very easily and then khalid i told to khalid usman if you give me one over maybe maybe one or two was maybe i can change maybe i get wicket because they were playing very well and i still remember you know uh, i took a ball and uh, i took f- uh, wicket on the second ball or third ball, i don't remember but after that i took four wickets and um, uh, seriously i still remember and i sometimes i speak to the pe- players you know it was semi final or quarter final and from there i think they were remaining only 60 runs and they were having six wickets and then one wicket down another down and you know uh, we won by some 25 or something uh, some uh, some run there that why i am saying because at that time cricket was very good and there was a lot of international players you know very good first class players were playing at that time yes uh, roni you are absolutely right uh, i remember that innings uh, and in fact that tournament uh, you were flying high you played a lot of innings with your partner your opening partner was if i am not wrong andre who used to come to bat no. no sir uh, abid ali was my uh, abid, abid, abid ali abid ali yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. having steady partnership 100 150 and putting on big yes, score yes. and bukhatir league yes, they say is one of the most iconic tournaments of this country and if you score runs in that tournament you are recognized oh, yeah true kuram i also remember in one of the tournaments rather oh. an india a team uh, you had scored a 100 uh, india a team if my memory is right uh, kurram uh th- yes that tournament actually i didn't score 100 against india a that uh-huh. tournament involved uh, india a pakistan a sri lanka a oh. and uae and ireland were you know asked to play full teams so i scored 100 against uh, Ar- uh, sri lanka a not out uh, 110 runs not out in fact i remember that match particular where i scored 100 Uh, I had a flight uh, I was coming back from Scotland so it was a 8 hour flight I landed home in Dubai slept 2 hours took a shower and drove to Abu Dhabi and I just managed to you know reach there because reach the match time because the match was live so I have to be there so I rest <laughs> reached there at least 1 hour before and then yeah it was a very good innings they had a very good bowling side you know 
Sri Lanka at that time had all the international players later who played for Sri Lanka. So it was a very good competitive side. We managed, actually we lost that game just by, I think one wicket. There were nine wickets down and they required nine, three or four runs in last over. Uh, they managed to score. We missed a run out. I think I missed a run out in the last over and that's how they won the match. But it was very, very good innings live on TV. And I think that was my first, first big performance on TV. Ronnie, uh, like Kuro mentioned about his innings against Sri Lanka, one innings against any international team where you did well with the bat or you were instrumental in the team doing well? Uh, uh, I will say against Afghanistan uh, when we qualified for the Asia Cup. Um, you know, but I still remember when we went, uh, it was surprisingly we already booked our return tickets before Asia Cup and the Afghanistan was the team who booked after the Asia Cup. And uh, and at that time, I started opening very newly and Rashid Khan was also there at that time. And we were, no one knows about Rashid Khan, uh, Rashid Khan at that time. Uh, uh, to be honest, uh, it was my day. And uh, I still remember Hafiz Khalid was my opening partner when I, I hit it first ball. For, uh, they started with left arm spinner. And I, it went for a six. So, uh, Hafiz told me that, uh, Rooney, we already took six or seven runs, seven runs, I think, because he took single on the first ball. So, I said, no, um, I won't stop on left arm spinner. And uh, we have to go ahead like that. <laughs> and, you know, I was swinging and it was coming on the middle of the bat. And, you know, I was <laughs> doing anything. And then we, when, when they came for chasing, uh, we started very well. But uh, later on, uh, they, uh, they managed to score it. And Nabi was batting and Kareem Sadiq was batting. And uh, Amjit Javed gave give uh, give me the ball in that time. And um, I remember, you know, I, balled, I took three wickets. I just gave away 16 runs in three was uh, And I scored 77 in that match. So, that was my international performance, which I will never forget. And, you know, it was my day, totally my day. Absolutely. And Kuram, uh, you scoring at the age of 42, uh, 132 runs against Afghanistan. Tell us something about that innings. Uh, yes, I think it was uh, just before the World Cup 2015. We had a series against Afghanistan. We had four matches. Uh, due to my flight, I couldn't play uh, one match in between, but I played three matches. First match, I think I scored 54 not out, then I scored 84, and then the last game, we were chasing 280 or I think 285. I scored 132 not out, 36, 136 not out. It was, I think, one of the best things I've ever played. You know, on ICC uh, ground, the wicket was amazing, and I was in a very good form at that time because the preparation for the World Cup was going on and really tough, you know, camp we were doing. So, I think I was in kind of peak of my fitness and uh, yeah, I love playing against Afghanistan, I think, especially that day. Uh, the, I remember one thing very important, that the bat I used in that innings, uh, it was very light. It was like 2.6 and the other opener, Amjad Ali and three four guys, they picked up my bat and they couldn't buy it. It's so light. It's like a kid's bat. How are you going to play with that? I said, let's, let's find out, man, uh, because I, it doesn't matter, you know, how your bat is, it's who's using it. So they laughed. And I went <laughs> on to bat, and my God, you know, the innings I played, they had such a good fast bowling attack at that time. Uh, uh, you know, top bowlers they had. Everybody knows before the World Cup, they had one of the top fast bowling attacks. But, uh, you know, the runs started coming over bat. It, was, it just made the, the chase so easy. I think I scored 136 and uh, Manna. Uh, he scored uh, another 50 as well. So we managed to chase the target in less, uh, I think, 46 overs, four overs to spare. Uh, so one of the good innings, one of the top innings I've ever played. Kurram mentioned about the 2015 World Cup, which was UAE's, I think, second 50 over World Cup after the 1996 World Cup when UAE had qualified. Right, Ronnie? Yes, yes. So this World Cup was happening in Australia and uh, New Zealand. And I remember in few matches, I don't remember the countries, I remember one match was against Ireland. I don't know the other countries, but there were matches where UAE was ahead and should have won the games. So, tell us something about those games, uh, Roni, your experience about that World Cup. Yes, I think uh, uh, in my point of view, that was the best team I ever played for UAE because we were having experience, we were having very talented players. 
and uh, to be honest everyone was on uh, peak at that time because as we were playing domestic cricket it was very good domestic cricket uh, we were playing against zimbabwe uh, i think uh, uh, zimbabwe and ireland i think if uh, from i think we dropped one or two catches at that time very crucial time which you know uh, cost us a match if that was i think we have a won against ireland because we were we were on a winning state at that time and against zimbabwe we did very well um, uh, of course uh, uh, we didn't well in the end but uh, we were like on a winning position at that time um, it was good experience as well uh, thing uh, it was my first time to playing against some big countries and you know with the world cup you know everyone dream as to play the world cup so it was good on his way kurram your memories about 2015 world cup Oh wow I think Ganesh bhai is playing a world cup uh, you know you have, I have played now so many tournaments and other ICC big events but playing the world cup is like whatever hard work you have done in your entire life it's it's paid off you know just 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 being there it's it's something different it's so special it's so magical it was amazing experience playing the world cup and yes I think the you mentioned that couple of matches first couple of matches we were very close to winning the games and i think as roni mentioned there earlier as well that couple of drop catches against ireland and the last stage is where we were they were nine down and we just had to take the catch we dropped catches and they managed to you know uh, took the match but overall playing in the world cup in new zealand australia i think this is kind of dream come true it was everything as i mentioned that you have done in your life is paid off also uh, uh, roni i remember you had played uh, the asia cup t20 asia cup happening or was it the world cup uh, in sri lanka where you played against india and uh, the team where amjad ali was the captain uh, ronnie which was that tournament no no i was not there in that tournament okay. uh, what think, was that uh, tournament was it was world asia cup? cup where amjad ali scored 70 against sri lanka okay cuz of his in the all right all right you see uh, my my reason i asked you this is uh, ue alhamdulillah has one of the best infrastructures whether it is first was the sharjah cricket stadium then we had the abu dhabi cricket stadium after that we had the icc academy then the dubai cricket stadium and there's so much of talent because as you guys were mentioning earlier it was 7 years to qualify to be eligible to play for ue but now it is two and a half years and if you see the cricket of uae when you compare it to countries like sri lanka or bangladesh or let's take the new baby afghanistan i won't talk about ireland and scotland let's talk about the asian countries where do you think uh, kurram uh, uae has actually not gone as fast as afghanistan what do you think was missing in uh, uae Oh, I think very important, very good question, Anis. By uh, I always say that you know, whenever I meet uh, these national team players or anybody, you know, officials, that uh, if you compare us with Afghanistan, let's say 2000 World Cup, we were both equals. We played a, a series before the World Cup. We managed to beat them three matches out of four, and even the last game, we lost in the last over because we, you know, we wanted to try everybody because we were just going for the World Cup. So we, want, so we were way ahead of Afghanistan. Afghanistan, you know, was a very, very good. team even that time. so from 2015 they, they just took off you know and uh, and if you see uae's uh, uh, journey we not only stayed at, i don't think we stayed at that level but we are but we we came down so the biggest reason for me i think it's domestic cricket domestic cricket the more quality domestic cricket you have in your country uh, the more good players you are want to produce you know under 16 under 90 level and a division level so if you go back 5 6 years i think you will remember roni will remember the quality of the a division cricket here in ua so i think the grassroots cricket is very very important and why afghanistan took off so i think they engaged all the players who were playing in afghanistan so they brought them into management all of them if you see they are in uh, with the afghanistan team in any any shape or the other they are coaches they are managers they are analysts they are trainers and we have more than 5 600 players first players playing first class cricket in afghanistan now and on the other hand if you see ua uh, i think domestic structure needs to be overhauled this is my personal thinking uh, 
Rohan, I don't know what he thinks and. Ronnie, your viewpoint on the above question, where you, as you, Ronnie, uh, as uh, Kurram said, that there was a time when you and Afghanistan were at the same level, and in fact, in the last series when you were played, you well managed to beat them three games, and the fourth game was also was a tight game. So, your opinion? Yes, uh, uh, as Kurram said, uh, uh, it depend on domestic cricket. Uh, uh, what he said, like in 2015, when we went to Australia or before we played series against any countries. We, we we used to be try to them beat them like Afghanistan. Uh, if you see the ratio, we will be 60 or maybe we are 70, 30 like that. But the reason was uh, at that time, if you remember, even Khoram remember, we used to face Sohail Khan, Anwar Ali, Khalil, or I'm I'm just saying the big names like you know more Muhammad Sami was there, and you know we used to bowl to Asad Shafiq, we used to bowl to Khalil Latif, Sharjeel Khan, or. Uh, these lot of players are I still say there is a lot of test cricketers were there in UAE, and Yasser Shah was there. But after that time, you know, domestic cricket level came down as well, uh, as uh, there was a lot of domestic teams which closed, and you know there were big domestic cricket team names. So that was a big loss for UAE. Uh, after that, because I'm I'm playing from that time and even now time, I think whenever I go to the ground, I never take a. You know, when we used to go for a match, we used to think about the place, like whom I will be facing today, what I have to do. But right now, you know, I just say, okay, we will go for a match and just play and come back because there is no competition at all in domestic cricket right now. So I think domestic cricket is very important for, uh, you know, your team growth. And um, and I believe so. Uh, Mr. Mubashir Sir is trying to do and organize some cricket events which will bring the players and, you know, improve our domestic cricket as well. So it will, you know, help as well. You mentioned that there were some teams like Yogi International and then Neeraj's team was, uh, what was Neeraj's team? Uh, Wings. 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 And then there was uh, Seven Seas. Uh, there was also Danube. There was one more big team playing from... Uh, Sharjah or Abu Dhabi, the two brothers used to run the show, Ipsons. Uh, Ipsons, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Ipsons. I'm not able to read. Phoenix, Jim Khana, Fly Emirates. I mean, if you go, keep going a little back, you we'll find so many teams. So, even in that period, if I'm trying to recollect, uh, there was high quality of cricket play. But do you think that UAE capitalized on it? Because was there a vision at that period where we could have seen that UAE grow? Heaps and bounds. Like, I don't think even Afghanistan, in fact, their players to, used to come to play and be a part of this tournament which was organized in UAE. So, Kuram, don't you think UAE failed to capitalize on that peak period apart from qualifying? Uh, I think that was a very good period for domestic cricket. As you mentioned, Afghanistan players were coming and uh, uh, one uh, Pakistan, you know, players, uh, lots of first class players, international players from Pakistan were coming here and they participating in the domestic tournaments, uh, Buhati League and all other, you know, 50 over tournaments and even 20 over tournaments. They used to fly here and play the tournament. Uh, another, and I think some of Sri Lankan players as well, if I remember, there were two or three players in, you know, every team. So the reason it finished, I think one big reason was that at that time Pakistan was not having any domestic cricket due to the security reasons. So most of the players, you know, when it's off-season and they don't have any tournaments going on, they used to fly and they used to find uh, you know, a team here. Uh, but uh, coming back to your question, I think, yes, that was the time where, you, where we, you know, lacked, we should have or le- exactly capitalized and let the system grow more better. That during that peak period, when we had good teams, rather all good teams and who were neck-to-neck, as I mentioned about Yogi, Ibsen's, Abu Dhabi, Jim Khana, or Wings. Uh, did you feel that UAE failed to capitalize? In fact, uh, there was a team, uh, Moon Holdings also from Sharjah. What was the name of the team? Uh, Alubon. Alubon. Yeah, very good team. So, these were all good teams. So, Ronnie, do you feel that UAE failed to capitalize on that period where Afghanistan took big strides ahead? Uh, this is why it's very difficult question for me, but I will still say that yes, of course, uh, there was a lot of good teams at that time. 
and i think uh, uh, and that if you say we have introduced few good players at that time like we selected few and then navid came in and there was other few players who came in from that time um you know i would say like you know we have to be um, i think you know it was something uh, very difficult to stay on because there was lot of tournament going on at that time and uh, but, you know there was a lot of entry fees from the uh, different uh, you know concerts so where you know the teams can uh, you know try to close it because of their business uh, uh, came down and all that so loss of their business so i think uh, you know we can we have to i think at that time you know there was a team you can capitalize from that time yeah Ronnie probably is a little shy to express his opinion, but I understand what Ronnie is trying to say. But uh, uh, I, I, yes, I, you I, know, Ronnie is by. Yeah, what I was saying is that the, the biggest advantage we had at the, that time, or even if you go before that, that the, all these big teams, Arabian teams, they were feeding all the players to national team UAE. So when you, these players were reaching UAE national camp, they they were almost ready. You know, yeah, obviously you need their, you know. small uh, uh, things to fix obviously you know their fitness or sometime it could be a little nickel where you can just uh, ask the player to work on it and so when you reach the international team you're almost ready uh, and if you compare it to now obviously the, when the quality of cricket is not that great then you have to prepare and you know groom the players when they reach the national camp obviously this is not what national camp should be doing they should be just working hard on the you know uh thinking about the tournaments and which team to pick and you know what to work for if you are going for different conditions so i think this is more hard work now for the national setup the team which is playing just to produce more players and quality cricket and yeah i totally results. agree with what kuram said that at that time the national team had cooked players coming straight into the playing side yes, rather than now where they have to do the ground work teach them the basics and then it get exposure because as ronnie was mentioning they were bumping into international stars today who have represented true whether it is sarfraz whether it is anwar ali or yasir shah or asad shafiq there are so many players sohel khan all these players who come from pakistan were giving you their experience and to share the same dressing room or to play against them it's like getting that extra experience which you lack in this country true anyway exactly true now let's talk about the current structure roni uh, now we have ha- i heard that few years ago the uae players were kept on a salary is that still on yes on uae players yeah 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 so that definitely helps because you in short retain the players because otherwise most of the pe- players who have been playing here are expatriates so who settle down and if they do not find cricket as a future then they go to other countries or to their home countries to look for work so what's your uh, opinion on that uh, ronnie uh manish bhai you are totally right uh, i would say like uh, you know uh, when forum used to play for ua and uh, to be honest i always say uh, we got odi status because of forum because in that time in 2014 he was only the one player i still remember mm. you know uh, we were depending on him totally depending on him like if he do our team will win yes we have to contribute it small small thing but khuram was the main thing main man and while if you take as a captaincy or as a batsman or as a, a bowler so if i would say if that time if someone had a contract if i mean i will say khuram khan so he would have more records at that time because you give a time to cricket proper cricket as you said even to a uh, match against sri lanka while uh, he was flying and he came back so i think he didn't get proper rest you know it, you know it affect your performance maybe not in one match but in most most of the match if you don't get uh, rest or you know uh, there is a lot of thing you have some other tension as well so uh, uh, getting contracts few players on contracts you know it helping us uh, uh, to be honest uh, uh, we just concentrate on cricket we don't have any other was like we don't need to take tension for the other things and uh, but one thing i will just say you know uh, uh, things will improve with the time um, you know it's it's not like that like you know if you get contract you will get change in one year or something like that 
yes, it will change, but maybe the future of UAE cricket, you know, the youngsters coming up, they will take uh, take take interest in the cricket as you know they will believe there is contracts. UAE players will get contract if you don't get a good job or something like that. So I think uh, it is uh, helping us out and. Um, uh, to be honest, there is few youngster players who are trying to get contract because they are, they are, you know, they are working hard to play cricket for UAE. So I, I believe it's quite good thing for UAE cricket, and it's still on, and uh, and you will see the difference, Anis. But you will see the difference in very short time. Sure. I'm waiting to see that difference, uh, Ronnie. I'll be very honest uh, about this point that my idea of probably having a team, a local cricket. It's not just to win the trophies, which you can see in the background, but wanted to <laughs> see UAE as a professional cricket team, we can, which can rub shoulders with the other Asian teams. If you even take background about Sri Lankan cricket team, or Bangladesh cricket team, or Afghanistan, they have all come through the hard work. And as I mentioned earlier, that the infrastructure whether it is the Sharjah Cricket Stadium or the Abu Dhabi or the Dubai or the ICC Academy, even the Ajman, the facility what you guys have, trust me, the Afghanistan national team doesn't have. Even Bangladesh, which is even though doing very well, in, they do not have such sure. a facility. And the talent what you guys have, you guys are talented. It's just that you guys need a tunnel and a light or a vision to be shown. And why can't you succeed when Afghanistan can succeed? Can you throw some light more on it, Ronnie? Uh, rather, Khurram on it. <laughs> I will just say, please, Khurram, bhai. You <laughs> first <laughs> Khurram, Khurram, obviously. Yeah. yeah. No, I think this is 100% uh, true. You know, all these teams which are, which are playing international cricket, take example, as we've already mentioned, uh, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, let's uh, include Afghanistan now as well. It's, it's hard work. And it's hard work. There's no doubt about it. And it has to be a uh, very good domestic structure. I think facilities and you know grounds we have one of the best. But then you have to have a very good uh, cricketing system in place as well with tournaments, which you know starting from low you know, level, let's say 12, 13, then 16, 19. So you are feeding players from younger age. One disadvantage I think we had earlier, even now I think Roni will tell me we are facing that the youngster, which is when they are reaching 18 years, so the parents are sending them out to you know study or. Uh, do something else. This is one big uh, uh, scare we always had as you cricket that we prepare a cricketer and then you see, you know, when he's ready to play, he's left and he's educating and he's going studying in Australia or UK or anywhere else in the world. So we, we, we had this uh, kind of drain system where these players were draining. But uh, obviously, we, if we have a very strong domestic cricket where when people start taking cricket as a, you know, that the uh, way of living that they can earn money with it and the future is like that. I think you can have a career in cricket. So I think if it's they're open to more to open more to it, then definitely cricket will improve. But currently I think I see it's a long journey. It's I don't see in near future, uh, very near future that UAE is uh, uh, doing very, very good because uh, for me I think it has to be domestic cricket, grassroots cricket and some, you know, planned cricket in, in, in the system, which currently I don't see. Ronnie, can you not mince some words and be bold enough to speak out your heart? <laughs> uh, uh, I will say Khoram was totally right. And uh, 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 if you say, uh, Anis Bhai, if you see the thing, a lot of things, you know, when we play cricket in UAE, it's quite difficult for the lot of players because they do jobs. And uh, they have to go for the job in the morning and then in the evening they get free and they come for the cricket. If you leave the contract players at time, we have some, uh, uh, we were having 12 players on contract. So if you leave 12 crickets, other than that cricketer, they, they do jobs. So uh, it's quite difficult for the other players to do it, uh, to play at that time because, you know, uh, 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 what do you say is uh, like, you know, if you don't see the future quite well, uh, you know, the the more people will take note, they will not take interest in that thing. You're right. So I think right now, uh, uh, what I saw after uh, a lot of time, like you know, a lot of players right now they take interest in cricket because they think that if they will work hard, they will perform in UAE domestic cricket, they will get contract. And I saw these things in youngster as well, and uh, I think which is very good thing. And uh, as Khoram said as well, that it's 
it's not in like one or two years but i believe in uh, uh, upcoming years five to eight years you know there is a lot of improvement and uh, i believe ue cricket will come up one thing i want to ask kuram uh, i have been seeing rather for last 20 years there has been more of t20 cricket and very less of 50 over cricket when they were corporate houses <coughs> then the long format don't you think this is one of the reasons also where the temperament of a player has not been built uh, i think you rightly mentioned anis bhai that t20 cricket uh, yeah it's different from the longer version it's short version you know you have very little amount of overs and the batsmen who go there they they have to you know prove themselves within very short span of time few balls actually uh, but uh, we have to understand this is the future of cricket uh, there's a lot of money in it uh, if you come, if you see icc and all other big you know you know uh, acc did so they are organizing t20 tournaments so we cannot just shy away from t20 it will be there but then it's uh, duty of uh, i think icc acc and our and our ua cricket board as well to organize longer uh, over tournaments 50 overs and even two day cricket you know i don't mind you don't have to have five two day cricket tournaments you can have one good tournament of two days and national players they are on your contract they are available you can have some additional uh, under 19 players which you want to include you can have two or three teams who are playing uh, you know two two day cricket 50 over obviously it has you have to have at least four or five minimum quality tournaments and you don't have to go for the number of the teams i think it has to be very short number three maximum five i would not even go for five three teams you distribute all the national players under 19 players in all those three teams and let them play you know again and again against each other and you can bring a teams from afghanistan from bangladesh from sri lanka india obviously if we can manage to get indian pakistan that's going to be huge but for me i think this is the way to go forward Ronnie, uh, don't you agree that red ball cricket is important to make a player or build a player's temperament? Uh, yes, Anis Bhai, it's very true. And uh, I have heard from a lot of uh, good cricketers, you know, whenever I meet them, they just played a red ball cricket in England. And it's not a quality cricket. But he said, when you play a red ball, you get your, uh, what you can say, your basic uh, right. And uh, you get a time to uh, you get to time on the crease and you know you can think about your shots you know it it, it improve your cricket but unluckily i didn't get most of the uh, red cricket in uae and right now even if you see icc have stopped four day cricket for the associate cricketers as well which is you know um, it's uh, i mean it's a minus point for us but i think uh, uh, two day cricket and 50 over cricket i always prefer 50 over cricket because uh, in UAE, we don't get most of the 50 over cricket. Um, um, you know, there's no domestic only Bukhatan league we played. Um, I think it, it's it's a good thing for improvement as well. And uh, as Khorambai said, you know, if you see Afghanistan cricket, they they play four day cricket, they play two day cricket. So I think that is the uh, sign of their improvement as well. Khorambai, your experience. Uh playing alongside, uh, rather being in the coaching staff alongside Stephen Fleming and Wakar Yunus? Oh, I think, <laughs> yeah, you can't ask for more, you know. Both have uh, played enough cricket and they have coached uh, some of the top teams in the world where they take, you know, these uh, uh, IPLs or PSLs and then national teams. They have a huge amount of experience. So just by being with them and see how they operate things. Uh, they, they're very organized, you know. But I realize is they don't do too much, you know, on the scene that you won't see them doing. But obviously behind the scenes, they have lots of things going on. They have just distributed work accordingly to the different people that, you know, one is managing fielding, let's say, and one is managing all the meetings, how you have to go about it. So I think, yeah, this, this, that was an amazing experience. And I have to say here as well, since I've been, you know, blessed and I think I was honored to uh, represent uh, Delhi Pools. And last time when we played, I had uh, Bengal Tigers. I think the organization, the management you had in your teams, but since you were with the team, it's amazing. This is something that I always tell everybody. The management of the team was amazing. And I, I uh, thoroughly, you know, I enjoyed playing there. Roni, uh, now that Robin Singh has been appointed as the UA national coach, have you had the, an opportunity of during the after the pandemic to start coaching with him? 
Uh, no, he's in India. Uh, uh, we have spoke to him on uh, Zoom, and we have sending him our videos whenever we do practice sessions. So he just uh, give us advice to do uh, whatever he like to for the improvement. So that's what only we are doing right now. Okay, your experience uh, playing the T10, sharing the first time you all were the champions when you Owen Morgan was the captain. And the second year, I'm not sure which team you played for, but uh, sharing with the big boys. Yeah, uh, Anis, but it was very good experience. Um, um, uh, to be honest, it's T10. I'm I'm not that much fan of T10, but still, you know, <laughs> he, he, uh, it's too short, and you don't get time to show yourself, especially for us. Uh, you know, in the first tournament, I played all the matches. I played only one ball, and that went for four. So at least whenever I, I used I to see the highest strike rate, so it was my picture. <laughs> Just the second was something Chris who are I don't know still, but my was a hundred four hundred strike rate. And in the next tournament, I didn't get opportunity in that tournament as well. I played only uh, I played all the matches, but I got one batting and I scored some ten runs or twelve runs, which we lost with that match as well. And the, in third edition, I got opportunity. I was picked by Team Abu Dhabi where they gave me bowling. Uh, they, uh, when I started bowling in the nets, and um, you know, Muin Ali and Dikmula was batting uh, in the nets. So I start with um, a slower balls, you know, um, when they play two, three balls and they were trying to hit me and I ball shooter and it went straight Yorker and I, uh, Dikmula got bowled. So he said, what are you doing? I said, that this is the, my ball. Which I bowl at T20, and people knows me up from because of that. And then I bowled to Muin Ali, and the next minute he came to me that, "Will you bowl with new ball?" I said, "Anything, you just give me opportunity. It's a new ball or used ball or anything like that." So it was very good uh, experience sharing with Muin Ali because uh, I'm very good, I'm big fan of Muin Ali because he left hand batsman on off spinner, and uh, he was very nice person as well and. Uh, you know, it was great experience, and uh, trust me, he helped me in my bowling as well. Uh, so, of course, if if you play under <coughs> the, these kind of legends, you know, you get experience, you get motivated, and uh, which help you out in your cricket as well. Very true. Uh, I think one thing I want to Anis, I just want to add that the last T10, which I uh, Abu Dhabi T10 League, was one of the best tournaments for UAE cricketers as well. You know, whoever participated from UAE yeah. team, I think they performed very well. If you take Rohan, yeah. Ahmad Raza, Zahoor, Asif Lala, I mean, there are so many names if I might miss some, but everybody performed very well. I think it was really a proud moment for us as well, you know, that we played for that team. And it's really, really hard to play that tournament as a bowler. You know, Rohan is saying that and I can see myself. If you're a batsman, yeah, you missed, you got out, or oh, thank you, you got out. It's 10 overs. But if you're a bowler, you have to bowl your six or six balls or 12 balls yeah. and you're expecting a boundary each ball. I think they bowled superbly, all those bowlers. And they, that was a very good tournament for them. Good advertisement for UAE cricket. Now, we are all hearing there's a buzz that IPL might come to UAE. And I just posted yesterday that it's good if IPL comes. But even if the UAE players don't get to play matches but even if they are part of the squad, that will also help them build their confidence. Do you agree, Kuram, to it? Oh, definitely. I think, uh, you know, your improvement, your growth, it does not only, you know, uh, comes from only playing in the ground. Obviously, if you are with the team, staying with the coaching staff, you know, practicing with them, playing practice matches, being in the ground, in the hotels, and see how things work in such a big setup. I think IPL obviously is the you know, it's the daddy of all cricket in the, if you see it. So, obviously, if you are there with the team and you didn't even get a chance to play, I think it's still be very helpful the, full for the players. Ronnie, if given a chance to play IPL, which team would you like to play? Your favourite team? Very, <laughs> I would love to play who give me opportunity. <laughs> and Some of the eight teams are lined up and you want to select one. Um, <laughs> Uh, to be honest, I will play for CSK because uh, uh, I love Dhoni captaincy and uh, I'm not fan of his batting, but I am fan of his cool and calm because I'm not that, I'm not that much calm person in <laughs> while in the field. But he is very different, so I just want to sit with him. What he thinks, what he do, so it will help us as well. 
I know. I was just going for the calmness. He says, "Such a wonderful captain. It's so calm." And Ronnie was saying, "I was completely different." <laughs> so I understand myself as well. And what I think, as a captain or as any player, that that calmness comes from your team, your role. When you see your team, that everybody is professional. Uh, let's say, take example of Ponting or uh, you know Dhoni. You're mentioning. If you have a wonderful team, if you have Shane Warne in your team, if you have Megra, if you have, you know, Siva in your team, then you're relaxed because, you know, everybody's going to go, they're going to do their job. job. Even if you lose the top, even if you lose the toss, you win the toss, wicket is green or blue or yellow, it doesn't matter because you're going to win. So that calmness comes from there. <laughs> and if you're a captain of a team where, you know, oh my God, who I'm going to play against tomorrow, <laughs> that brings worries and, you know, these uh, chigas in your stomach. So it's, it's different, completely different job. Depends who you are captaining. All right. So now what we'll do is ask some quick fire rapid questions uh, to both of you. <coughs> you can ask questions and let's see how you guys can uh, dodge or duck under it. All right. So first I'll start with Roni. Roni mentioned that uh, Dhoni is quite calm and he is not that calm. All right. Uh, he's a little more aggressive and everybody has a different style, nothing wrong in it. Uh, he mentioned he doesn't like Dhoni's style of batting. Whose style of batting in the Indian cricket team he likes? Ronnie, this is to you. You ask, this is to me. Yeah. Of course, Virat Kohli. Um, he's a totally legend batsman. I think uh, there is no doubt about him. Uh, for you, Kurram, in, in Pakistan team, which is the best batsman according to you? I think Babar Ali by far. Babar Azam by far. All right. Ronnie, in the Afghanistan team, uh, you've played against almost everybody today who are playing international cricket. If you had to pick one player, whom would you pick in your team? I will go with Rashid Khan, of course. He's a game changer and to be honest, he's... Is different from all, all of the world, you know, all of the world spinners. For you, Kurram, if you had to pick an Indian player in your squad and you had only one spot, don't know whether it's a batsman or a bowler or a wicket keeper, whom would you pick? Oh, wow. That's it. You're the Rohit captain. Sharma. You're the captain. <laughs> I'll pick Rohit Sharma. You'll pick Rohit Sharma. All right. Ronnie, your idol cricketer from UAE. Your inspiration? Uh, Thank you, Ronnie. 100% Rani. Khoram Bhai. Uh, of course, <laughs> when I started cricket, yeah. trust me, I'm not lying at all. When I started playing cricket, we were following him. And uh, he is a legend for us. He will be legend for my... I don't think so. <coughs> Anyone of you he will take his place. Trust I, me. I no agree with you. Thank you. What about you? Your inspiration when you started playing cricket in UAE, Khoram? Oh, wow. That was... Good one. Actually, uh, no, I cannot just say yes or no here because when I came to UAE, it was a completely different situation. As I said, you have to live here five years to be eligible to play for UAE. And the rest of the players, they were either born or doing nationals. <coughs> Excuse me. So at that time, if you say from expatriate, I really liked Arshad Ali back then. He was such a consistent player. You know, even Nasir Siddiqui, when he was picked for uh, Canada Tour, he was very good as well. And that's why he was picked. I think I would go for Arshad Ali. He's a very good batsman. Ronnie, I know you are naughty, but apart from you, who is the most naughtiest today in the dressing room? Of UAE? Mm, you can say all of, <coughs> all of them. Pick one. <laughs> but uh, This is go, not going to go live, but we are going to show it to everybody in UAE. It was <laughs> Ramesh Shazad. Ahmed Shazad. Totally Ramesh. Ramesh Shazad. Ramesh Shazad. Yes, he is a naughty person and <laughs> no one can reach to him because he's very different and um, he's the one. Kuram, to you, the fittest UAE player according to you? I think when I was playing, uh, I would say Rohan, Mehmet Raza, uh, you know, they were the top, even Chirag, one. because one. he was came one. very late when I was playing. Pick one. One. Uh, I, I would go for uh, Rohan because his package was the one I like. You know, he can bowl, he can bat and he's one of the best fielders. So, Ahmed only because he's a bowler and very good fielder. But I would go for Rohan. Rohan, if you had to open an innings, 
you had a choice of three players. Okay. And we are talking about ODI cricket. Okay. You had Babar Azam from Pakistan. You had Rohit <laughs> Sharma from India. And from Sri Lanka, Sangakara. I will go with Sangakara. Okay. Um, yeah. You want to add uh, as, Yeah, because Sangakara, um, one of the finest left hand batsmen. Um, and if you see his uh, totally career, he was one of the great batsmen for Sri Lanka as well. Um, Rohit Sharma was also in my mind, but uh, if it's come to left hand batsmen, so I will go for Sangakara. Uh, Kuram, to you, uh, you had David Warner, you had Virat Kohli, and you had Williamson. Whom would you pick? Uh, so, it's, you're talking about T20, uh, 50 over cricket, yeah? Yes. I mean, Kohli, any day. <laughs> I'll pick Kohli. Any day. Right. Uh, great conversation with you guys. Uh, two of the finest cricketers the UOA has produced. One who is a, currently a flight pursuer, but is also has been one of the finest cricketers, as I said earlier, that UOE has had. And we've also had Rohan Mustafa, who, as I said, can bat, bowl, field. God alone knows what he can't do. So I sincerely <laughs> hope that, you know, we see UOE on the roadmap very soon. Inshallah. Uh, we have the infrastructure, as I mentioned. We have the talent. Now you have one of the good coaches of India who's going to coach uh, once the pandemic is over. And I wish the very best, Roni, to you and your team and to Kuram in your future endeavors. I hope uh, we had a good conversation. Thank you very much. Wonderful, wonderful.